Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Tapped Out Studios interview edition. Once again, I am Nick McDaniel, and I am here today, and I am joined by Glacier, Ray Lloyd. Uh, how are you, buddy? Man, I'm good, Nick. How about you, bud? <laughs> Man, I could, if I, you look, I, it would be a crime to be doing any better, I think, is the way they like to say Um I, look, I, I love doing these. I love doing these interviews. But when you reached out to me, you know, look, you know, we're big. I'm a big fan of yours, man. Have been. Uh, I always tell everybody um, we actually have a mutual friend that I think yeah. I told you that story. I'm not going to say yeah. her name or anything. Yeah. And uh, I we always talk about like, hey, one of the absolute nicest guys in pro wrestling. Uh, and just <laughs> it's always a pleasure to talk to you, man. Man, well, same here. It's always a pleasure to come back on the and on. And I'm so, you know, I'm so supportive of what you guys are doing. I just, I think it's amazing the uh, the longevity you guys have had and and the commitment you have to to your show because uh, it's been running how long now? Uh, Brace yourself. It's yeah. been uh, it's been seven and a half years now. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, and, and, you know, week after week after week. I mean, and you know, you guys, you you the format and everything is so so well done, and obviously. Yeah, I'm sure you learn as you go through the, through the years, but but it's just you know you guys have made a commitment to doing it right and um, and being professional, and that really shines through, which is you know why I'm so so happy to to see the success you guys have had with the show, but also just uh, just proud of you guys and and uh, glad that we're friends and that we love wrestling. You know, yeah, <laughs> you man. Talk well, wrestling. listen, I can't tell you how much that means to me. Um, coming from you, uh, I appreciate that, and you're going to make me blush. So uh, let's uh, let's tell everybody. Look, uh, we are a look. We're a wrestling podcast. Everybody knows that. But today we're here, you know, in a segue to cover something that I know is near and dear to your heart. Uh, something that we've kind of been on the periphery of for a while, know a yeah. little bit about. Um, you've done this spectacular movie, The Unbreakable Bunch. So that's kind of what we're here to talk about today. Um, first, like, kind of real quick, just kind of catch everybody up to speed. You know. What is the Unbreakable Bunch like? What what are we looking at here? Well, the Unbreakable Bunch is a uh, action adventure sci fi film that uh, was the brainchild of, of me and, and uh, Luther Wilson, uh, who wrestled in, in WCW and, and TCW with Turnbuckle Championship Wrestling, and, and all throughout the years as, as Luther Biggs. And we actually met at the power plant back in 1996 and became fast friends. And you know, we're still you know, great friends, like even like family today, you know, and, uh, but, uh, it was an idea he had originally, uh, way, way back. And we, uh, finally got serious about saying we wanted to make a movie that was different than anything else out there for to the pro wrestling audience. And, um, and, and, you know, Nick, uh, it's just about, just about any wrestling movie that's made either goes one way or the other. It either shows the dark side of the business or it's a total, total hokey side of our business, you know, where, you know, sometimes they, you know, it's a comedic take on it and maybe they even kind of make fun of it or whatever. And, and I get all that. I really do. But, you know, we, we would get so frustrated when we try to find a good wrestling movie that, that nothing that re- we could find anything that really, that really painted wrestling in a good light, you know, and, and, and we felt like, you know, I mean, there's so much good about wrestling. There's so many, great people in wrestling, you know, as far as fans and, and, and wrestlers themselves. And that we were like, you know what, we want to make a movie that showcases that. And we were always big fans of the, the ensemble cast films of like the sixties and the seventies, you know, like the, the wild bunch and the magnificent seven and the dirty dozen. And um, even the original longest yard with Burt Reynolds was, was kind of an ensemble cast. Cause you know, it was, you know, there was this, they were in this prison. There was all these different characters that, you know, in this football movie, but, uh, but yeah, just movies like that, that had that great story, had a lot of great characters. And, but we were also really big fans of John Carpenter. And uh, of course, you know, we both got an opportunity to, to work with the, the, you know, the legendary Roddy Roddy Piper in WCW, get to know him. And, you know, of course, through all of that, one of our favorite movies is they live. So, you know, I always say that this, if you want to know in just one sentence what this, the story is uh, of the Unbreakable Bunch, it's basically the, the Magnificent Seven meets They Live, you know, come together. <laughs> and so, and, um, and what we decided to do too was we're also really big fans of that, that era of like 80s action kind of, you know, B movie sci fi action film, you know, and, and there was a company called Canon Films back then that, that basically launched the careers of Chuck Norris and John Claude Van Damme. And uh, if you go back, all those movies of Chuck Norris and John Claude Van Damme were, were canon films, you know, and, and there's a great documentary about the, the whole canon film journey, you know, that's on uh, Netflix now or, or Amazon Prime, one of them. But, uh, but anyway, 
we all we love those kind of movies. And so we wanted to make a movie that was a little bit of a tip of the hat to, to that type of movie. And so uh, so when we, we sat down to, to, to put the story on paper, we had a good friend of ours, uh, John Waterhouse, who was a writer um, and uh, a great writer. And he wrote the original draft of the script because up until that point, you know, that's what everybody kept telling us, you know, until you write a script, it's just an idea banging around in your head, you know, and the I script makes it real, you know. And so we got that original draft of the script, uh, which we're very, very thankful to John for. And um, and then as any script in a movie like this, uh, the script, you know, there were there were changes and there was an evolution of the script, uh, you know, as we as we went through, uh, you know, the, the whole process. But uh, but we finally got to the, the final story that we wanted, which still had the bones of the original concept that we had that we came up with. And um, yeah. And then. Fortunately, we were able to get it made, and and now we're here finally after the long, long journey, and we're getting ready to uh, to debut it here uh, Friday, April eighth, April nineteenth, excuse me, and uh, we can talk a little bit more about that later. But but yeah, it was. Um, but it's a movie that, and I'll probably say this several times during our conversation. It's a movie we made for the professional wrestling audience. Anybody who loves professional wrestling, whether you're a fan, whether you're a wrestler, whether you're a referee, whether you're a promoter, whatever. We made this movie for you because we want those people that, and you and I were just talking about this before we started recording is, you know, there's, we all fell in love with wrestling because it made us feel something, you know? And, um, and a lot of us were reminded about that after just seeing this great weekend of WrestleMania 40, you know? <laughs> and so, but, uh, so we wanted to, uh, tap into that emotion that made people that that thing that made people fall in love with pro wrestling and we wanted to to honor that and make a movie that is a lighthearted fun ride but also one that really does like i said paint wrestling in a very positive light and and i um we 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 actually were to screen the movie about six weeks ago during royal rumble weekend we screened it for uh conrad thompson had a group Mm -hmm. of his his uh uh people there we and we screened it and that's the one thing i said when i introduced the film is i said we want to make something that uh, that the pro wrestling world can be proud of as far as how wrestling is presented in the movie. And I think we really did that. It, you know, it's uh, cause you talk about how we loved wrestling and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and it's, you know, before we do, I, you brought up the release date. So I do want to share that. And then we'll yeah. get into some more meat of that. Sure. Um, as you said, it's a, you know, it is a opening weekend, limited release there. You can see dates, times. Uh, do you want to, I mean, and it's up to you, like how we yeah. like, kind of came to these are the markets and this is kind of how that that came to be sure it's a great story you know i um i always say whenever you do something and you do it for the right reasons with good intentions the, the universe seems to come together to help you out <laughs> and we actually and we're in final stages of, of uh, uh negotiating a deal with a, with a great distribution company uh which uh once once that's finalized i'd love to come back on and kind of tell everybody about that because we, we're certainly um We've, we've been very patient with that process of trying to find the right partner for distribution because this is the type of film that we wanted to, to have worldwide distribution because wrestling is is popular worldwide. And so we wanted to make sure we had the right partner and we're very close to finalizing that deal now. But um, but also, you know, uh, we had a great connection with Imagine Entertainment Theaters, uh, which is uh, a great theater chain up in the Midwest. It's the ninth largest theater chain in the country. And... Um, uh, and if uh, if you're it's in five the five uh, Midwest states, which is Michigan, uh, Minnesota, Illinois, Indiana, and um, let's see, let me get, Michigan, <laughs> Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, Minnesota, and uh, what's the other one? There's another one I'm leaving out there, but uh, but uh, I, I'll I'll come up with them here soon. But uh, but um. Uh, but it's it's a, an unbelievable chain. Their theaters are amazing. I mean, amazing theaters. And actually, I just learned from talking to one of their their marketing people just earlier today that they they actually do a lot of watch parties at their theaters for UFC and for AEW, um, you know, pay per views and and even some of their just their bigger shows that they broadcast. But um, but yeah, we we partnered with them, so we've got an exclusive deal to to released exclusively or debut opening weekend for the film with them. And uh, there's three theaters that we're going to be debuting in, which would be the, the Canton, Michigan location, uh, the Portage, Indiana, and in Lakeville, Minnesota. So um, so those are, and, and that's what you just showed it on the graphic. And, um, it, and, and I'm sure I'll mention this too before we, we wrap up, as, but uh, for all the uh, updated information as far as how to find uh, you know, our website, and of course there's all the social media links on our website, it's it's the unbreakable bunch movie.com. 
theunbreakablebunchmovie.com. And then uh, and, and any, anywhere on social media, you can just search The Unbreakable Bunch Movie. And, uh, but, um, but all the tabs obviously are on our website. The trailers are on our website. Uh, there's a lot of great behind the scenes photos on the website, a lot of really great graphics. Uh, when we did the website, I wanted to make sure I had somebody who really could do it right. So we went to uh, my, my really, really good friend and just a, a great graphic artist and great web designer, um, Robert McLaren. And Robert is actually DDP, uh, Diamond Dallas Page's web guy. He has all of his web stuff. So, yeah. so uh, you know, we, we went and got some really, really good talented people to uh, to really help us on this journey. So, uh, so yeah, so there was um, uh, a great connection that was made with Imagine Entertainment Theaters, and they have just been amazing. Uh, and uh, we're um, uh, we're actually uh, trying to put together some pretty big announcements next week about the, especially at the uh, the Canton, uh, uh, Michigan location, which is right there, basically in Detroit area. Uh, that we uh, there might just be you know some uh, some appearances there at the Canton location, but I uh, I haven't been able to confirm that just yet. So uh, I'll. Maybe um, next week before we post this, maybe I'll have that information by the time you get ready to post this. And look, all of that will be on the website, social media, and all that, I'm sure. By the way, I will put it in the show notes. I'll have all of those links as well. So if you're watching, you could oh, literally great. just go down to the show notes and click it. It'll jump you straight over to the website, all, Facebook, Twitter, all that stuff. I'll make sure that those links are in the show notes for you. Um, you mentioned friends. It's always good to be, you know, to have friends <laughs> and that can help you and stuff, which going to lead me, look, one of the things as a wrestling fan that intrigued me so much, um, obviously, again, mentioning, we were kind of on the periphery. We saw some of the names, you know, that are in this. Um, and when you go to make this, I'm assuming the nature is to, like, Magnificent Seven, it's your buddies, you know, like, it's it's a, it's a Western sci-fi action movie is the way you yeah. kind of sound like it is. <laughs> but if you're going to do this, you want to do, like, if it's a it's a Western in the sense of, like, a bunch of buddies hanging out, yeah. Go go really hit close to home and go to your buddies. Yeah. Kind of who like give some of the names and like, you know, how did that happen? And you brought your friends into this project because, uh, like I said, there's some really name, some good names that people are going to go like, oh, wow, wow, wow. It's a great reason to get out and see this movie. Yeah. You know what? And we want to make a movie that um, that brought a, a great group of legendary pro wrestlers together and you know i don't necessarily consider myself a legendary pro wrestler but but there are a lot of great hall of fame legendary wrestlers in the movie and they all did one heck of a job and i mean that sincerely i think the thing that most people are going to be surprised by nick is the level of of acting in the film because you know you, you can imagine right off the bat when you say pro wrestlers versus aliens, there's going to be certain skeptics that go, oh, my gosh, really? You know, <laughs> but uh, which is fine, because I, I want to hopefully, uh, you know, prove them wrong. But but the thing is, is like when we sat down and wrote the script and, and started kind of, to, you know, kind of making some adjustments here and there. But w originally we had certain people in mind that we wanted to write certain roles and hoping that they would, you know, come on board and, and play that role. Obviously, um Ernest Miller was one of the first ones just because, you know, he's still one of my closest friends to this day. And he's an amazing, talented actor and wrestler and a performer all the way around. And and so and, and it's just something I talked to Ernest about. I, you know, I shared this with some of our inner circle, Luther and I both years ago. And so I'd always told him, like, hey, if I can make this happen, you know, there's a role that I have written you know, with you in mind. And I really only want you to be the one to play that role. <laughs> so, so, uh, so, you know, we, we got Ernest and, uh, and of course there's a, uh, Dallas Diamond Dallas Page has a, has a great role in the film. It's a, his role is, it's not necessarily a super big role, but the, but his part in the movie is a really, really cool part of the movie. Uh, it's not necessarily what you would call just a quick cameo or something like that, but it's a really pivotal part of the movie, very big element of the story that the, the scene that, uh, and the part that he plays in the film. Um, and then, you know, another Hall of Famer is the living legend, Larry Zabisco. And I've known, Luther and I have both known Larry for forever, for, you know, back even, you know, our WCW days. And um, and Larry's just, he's, a, you know, Larry looks like, somebody just said this the other day, and I thought it was great. Like, Larry, he looks like an old school Hollywood star. You know, <laughs> he looks like that guy that would be walking down the sidewalk in, in you know, that old school Los Angeles neighborhood, you know. <laughs> you know he's like, got a you know, Clint Eastwood look. Yeah, he does. And, and, and he's he's very articulate. He's um, he's very worldly. He, you know, he's just he, 
he plays and his character in the movie is this retired world champion who's made all this money, you know, lives in a gated community, plays golf all the time. And, and, and he stepped right into that role and did an amazing job with it. Um, then you know, we had uh, the Lariat, Stan Hansen, you know, because it has an amazing role in the movie. And, you know, I met Stan back when we first did, I, it's the first film I ever worked on was uh, No Holes Barred with, with, you know, Hulk Hogan's film. And, mm -hmm. and Stan was on that and, and we met and we became great friends and we've stayed great friends over the years. And I'll never forget Luther and I were actually, and you may be able to help me remember exactly what year this was. It was when WrestleMania was in Miami. I'm thinking that was around maybe 2010, maybe somewhere around that. But, uh, uh, you're trying to do the math. Uh, yeah, because so that was. Uh, uh, you're gonna hold me to this. Uh, here's the crazy <laughs> no, thing. I, can't I can remember tell you a bit. little bit. <laughs> so it's been about twelve to thirteen years ago. So your math is almost right because yeah. crazy enough, that's the year I uh, dated my wife because she came over ah. to my house to watch the WrestleMania. Oh my god! Anyway, gosh. long story there, but yeah. So that's your a, math is a, pretty close. Yeah, that's yes. a, that's a great memory to have there to, of why that's special yeah. to you. But, but yeah. we, we ran into Luther and I were there and we were just visiting that day. Cause some of our friends, you know, and, and we ran into Stan, you know, and we were sitting there talking and, and I, and I remember Stan and we were, I talked about, you know, some of the acting I'd done. And I just remember Stan saying like, well, Ray, you know, like if you ever end up doing a movie, you got a role, you know, where you might could use me. I'd be, I'd love to do another movie. And uh, so I always kept that in the back of my mind. And I was like, well, if we ever get this thing done, I definitely want to, write a role for Stan and, 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 and we did and hoping that he would and could do it. And thank God he, you know, he, he was able to, and then he did. And, and I will say this, um, cause not don't certainly don't want to give anything away to the story, but I will say this, I was guilty of writing a little bit of, you know, everybody knows the, the legendary tough guy reputation of Stan. I was, we were guilty as, as the writers and producers as thinking, okay, well, you know, I want to make sure we pursue, we, we, portray him like that in, in, in the, in the movie, because that's what everybody will expect. And of course, to some degree we do, but he actually gave a recommendation to us for the script and said, Hey, I'd certainly be open to doing this. And we went back, we thought about, and we wrote it, rewrote, you know, some of the script based on his suggestion. And I will say, I think it makes the movie a whole lot more impactful. Uh, as we build up to that part of the movie, I think it's something that I guess people are really, really going to be, uh, be surprised by it to, to see, you know, how things play out with Stan, but uh, with his character, but, uh, but, um, but, you know, and then there's, uh, you know, Gangrel, David Heath, you know, came in and, and, and did a mm -hmm. great, great job for us. We, there's a scene in the movie where um, we, uh, uh, there's a big, big fight scene at like this, uh, this, this small town festival. And, uh, and it's a good old friendly fight scene, you know, and, and, uh, and it's with us, us against, you know, a bunch of uh, volunteer firefighters and the, and the way it starts is, you know, there's, um, you know, one of our um, buddies and, you know, one of the characters on, on of our group is in this, um, you know, this, this pizza eating contest with, with one of the locals. And, then, you know, things kind of go from there. And I don't want to reveal too much, but but eventually, you know, things kind of get out of hand and there's, you know, guys take sides and all of a sudden this good old friendly fight breaks out. And we we basically uh, that was to me like, the, um, you know, Luther and I are both big Burt Reynolds fans, big John Wayne fans, you know, those fight scenes, you know, the big, big, you know, punches and kicks and stuff. So we wanted a fight scene like that. And, uh, um, and we all, it's funny. I told I told Luther this just the other day is, uh, I always say that, you know, even though I'm a big fan of the John Wick movies, I feel like our fight scenes that we came up with on purpose or more John Wayne than John Wick, you know? <laughs> so we, 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 and I mean, what I mean by that is we wanted to make fight scenes to where there wasn't a lot of the super, super quick cuts like you see a lot today in a lot of the action mm -hmm. films, or sometimes it's almost hard to keep up with it. I mean, we did, you know, cuts where we felt like they needed you know, and the, and the way they, they work, but we wanted to make the fight scenes a little bit more of a tip of the hat to those classic type fight scenes like, from the, and there's a movie called Hooper that that. Um, that oh Burns, my! You just stole my yeah. thunder. I'm literally gonna say that was what yeah. I was about to say. I'm gonna show my age by saying yeah. the bar fight scene with Hooper. <laughs> right and from from Hooper, and I think Hooper came out around eighty, eighty one, something like that. So, uh, but but you know, I always loved that movie, and I love the fact that Burt Reynolds. And this is a really kind of a lot of our journey is a lot like I think Burt Reynolds' journey was that. I mean, I'm quite sure that you know, even in, in 1980 or so when that was made, there probably weren't a lot of people that said, oh, well, you know, you can't make a movie about stuntmen. Who's going to want to watch a movie about stuntmen? You know, well, it, Bruce, I mean, Burt proved that you, a lot of people 
wanted to watch it and they loved it. And that movie still, I think it still holds up today. But um, very but much so. we very much wanted to make do a tip of the hat. For, I, it was like I was bound to determine the one thing I was going to have in this movie because I might not get the chance to ever do it again was I was going to have a scene that was a, a that was you know an homage to that. And and we really really I, I'm really proud of that fight scene in the film. But uh, you know there's a, a Dave Heath comes up and does. You know some great scenes in the movie, and 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 just just really knocked it out of the park as we knew he would. Um, and uh, and of course, certainly last but not least is you know the, the great Tonga Fafita, who you know WWF fans will know as as King Haku. And of course, when he was with us in WCW, he was Ming. Um, he's been uh, a, a great great friend to me and Luther since our WCW days. And and I would go as far as to say. You know, really, we we consider him, and, and I believe he considers us family. And, and a lot of people throw that word around, but I, I don't throw it around a lot. And and that's the kind of friendship and relationship that we have. It, it goes so far beyond wrestling. And and I know that Tonga is such a great performer. Yes, and he's known for all the legendary tough guy stories you hear and all that. And he's he's definitely that guy. But um, he's one of the kindest, most sincere. Uh, most humble people I have ever known in my entire life in or out of wrestling. And we felt like that we wanted to write his character to where you get to see the stuff that we know everybody wants to see, which is, you know, the great wrestler, the great tough guy, some great fight scenes. But there's also a really great side to, that we show in this movie of, of him, you know, being a family man, being, you know, a, a father and a grandfather and, and you know, just a, an overall great guy. We, we show that side too. And I think, I think people are really going to enjoy seeing that. Uh, and, and just some other ones, uh, Missy Hyatt. Missy Hyatt uh, has a great uh, scene where she she shows up in the movie. And uh, and I give Luther all the credit in the world. I mean, he contacted her. And, uh, you know, we shot most of the movie in and around Orlando, Florida, mostly in, in Sanford, Florida, historic Sanford, Florida. And she lives, I think, in Ocala, which is only about an hour away. And so she was able to come over, and, and which was, was awesome. And I'm trying to make sure I'm not, of course, me and Luther have good roles in the movie, but, uh, and also uh, um, Big Ron Reese, you know, who was you know, the Yeti. Everybody knows it's the Yeti. Yeah, you know? yeah. All seven foot two of him. You know, he, uh, it's funny. Luther just was just describing Ron to somebody just earlier today. And it was the, and he said, man, I just came up with that off the top of my head. And it really is true of Reese as a person, you know, is, you know, he was explaining it to somebody, explaining what Reese looked like. He said he's seven foot two. He's a big giant of a guy. And you can see the, the people, the you know, faces was like, oh, and he said, he said, well, let me be clear. Like, he's he's not a scary seven foot two. He's more like a Sesame Street version of seven foot two. Seven foot two. <laughs> <laughs> and and you know accurate. Ron, that's accurate. That is, that's pretty yeah. darn accurate, you know. And so, um, but um I will say this too. Uh, there are some great AEW faces in the movie that pop up that were actually they were pre AEW at that time. They had not signed with AEW, and uh, one is uh, one is Anna J. Uh, and, you know, Anna pops in and has has a great role. Uh, I, I, I won't spoil it for everybody, but it, it's a it's a great role, and uh, and it's funny. Even um, Julia Hart. Uh, Julia has a scene, and and actually at the time I think Julia was. Um, maybe going through uh, our, our camp, maybe at that time, whatever. But it was a scene where um, where we needed to shoot some shoot some more crowd scenes, you know. And and so we had a, you know kind of a tight shot of just you know just a half a dozen people or so. And it was um, you know a good mix of our female students and male students. And obviously we put the females up front because you know rather than the old ugly guys, you know, <laughs> we put them up front. But but uh, but you know it was. Um, uh, you know, I did. So you can see uh, there's some glimpses of Julia in the, in the movie, and, and Anna has a great role, and and there are other other few more surprises I won't I won't ruin. But uh, but that's it, we we really went the extra mile to try to give the wrestling fan uh, a really great experience as far as all the faces that, that they'll see in the movie. Well, look, I mean, it sounds like look with the action and the names and the draw, but without further ado, man, like look, <laughs> we 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 did we, we're going to have a little bit of the trailer here. And yeah. then we'll come back. I just want to kind of, we've teased it long enough, right? So now we're going to drop the trailer here, let Absolutely. everybody get a look at it, and then we'll come back and discuss it a little bit after that. Sounds good. In a quiet Florida town, life was simple until everything changed. Did you see that? As an alien force invades and takes control, a group of unlikely heroes must come together to save the day. 
They fought epic battles in the ring, and now they're back, joining forces for the ultimate fight of their lives. With every townsperson in danger, these seasoned warriors will have to bring their A-game to defeat the alien menace. In a battle where stakes are higher than ever, it's time to wrestle with destiny. Pro wrestling versus aliens. Man, that's like a monster movie. Man, that's, that looks like it's going to be just so fun. I think your analogy of, you know, the Magnificent Seven and They Live, it fit, look, it fits right into what we saw there. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, uh, again, if you want to check out the trailer, theunbreakablebunch.com, we'll share in all the notes. We'll have yeah. the website, we'll have the YouTube channel, all that stuff links there as well. Um, but, like, look, what else? I mean, you know, should we be expecting any surprises or anything, like as far um, as the movie? Well, you know what? Uh, I think probably the best way to um, to kind of set the table for you know the, the the movie itself is just to kind of maybe explain a little bit of how the, what the story is in the film, which is um, it's basically two parallel stories that the audience sees in the beginning, and uh, the one is where um, this young reporter, this young female reporter, has she's has been assigned to do this human interest story on this old retired wrestler, and who's a very mysterious person, and so she goes to do. Um, that interview, and it's uh, it's actually Luther's Luther's character called Burning Love in the movie, and he's uh, obviously a big Elvis fan. But the one thing I always say is it's very important to note is that his character is a big Elvis fan, but he's not an Elvis impersonator. You know, which you, typically that's what you see in the movies is an Elvis impersonator. And uh, but this guy, this character dresses a lot like Elvis. He's, he, he he, but he's a, he doesn't necessarily talk like Elvis. He's a big fan of Elvis. But anyway, she comes to this mysterious. And we found this this great, beautiful Florida mansion that, that that we used as the exterior shot. And she comes to interview him. And basically, he tells this whole grand tale to her kind of in, in retrospect. So he basically narrates kind of the, the, the story of throughout the movie, basically, you know, telling it to her. And so the audience sees that, the viewer sees that story. But then they also see a story that's a parallel story of this 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 alien presence that's starting to take place and slowly take over the small Florida town. And what happens is the story that that Vernon Love tells to the reporter is that there's this group of you know veteran wrestlers. They come back together for a good cause to, to help a friend in need. And it's the old classic story of they've got to raise a certain amount of money in a certain amount of time. So there's the ticking clock. And um, they all end up going back to work for this one promoter they swore they'd never work for again. <laughs> and so, and so they, and they only go for this one last tour, though. So, uh, so, and there's all the situations that the audience gets to see as to why that happens and how that happens. And then eventually, while they're on this tour, eventually they have a day off and, and they happen to stop off in this small Florida town where all this strange stuff is going on. And then that's where the two stories intersect. And, and then that's where, uh, from that point on, uh, you know, chaos ensues at that point. <laughs> and so, so, uh, but it was, it's a fun story. Like I said, I feel like the audience uh, is hopefully, you know, really going to enjoy it. We, we were very big, very, very, focused on and determined to make a story that was uh, the, uh, the movie comes in a little under 90 minutes. We wanted to make it a good fun ride, but not, you know, we didn't need to try to make a super long movie. You know, we didn't want to make that because we know movies like this aren't really meant to be real long like that, you know? And so we, we, we knew what kind of time frame we wanted. And, and we, we, it started off, I think the first cut of the film was over two and a half hours long. So we had a lot of work to do <laughs> to get it gradually cut down. But, um, but you do that, you know, you, 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 uh, cut out anything that doesn't move the story along and you know we really did have to separate ourselves a lot from emotionally from the film because there were certain scenes in the movie that we shot that luther and i both really really loved but it just it when we had to cut stuff it you know just didn't fit you know it didn't make the cut necessarily for it to, to be in that final you know is i think i think our movie comes in like 80 86 minutes i think now so uh but um but that's on purpose. We did that because we want the people to get in, enjoy the fun ride, and then you know leave them wanting more. Like they say in pro wrestling, that's you know always been the, the, the goal. Uh, yep. yeah the goal is to leave them wanting more, so they'll come back and or maybe hopefully they'll go tell people and maybe they'll come some see it again. You know, so but uh, but it's a real fun story. It's a story with a lot of heart. The one thing Nick that we were so so determined to do was to show the 
what everybody sees the story of, of wrestlers in the ring. We want to show a story of like what happens outside the ring when these guys get together and they, they travel and they go on the road and you know, they're, they're, their wrestling personas get dialed down a little bit and you get to see the human side of them. And we've seen a lot of that before when, like I said, with the dark side of, of wrestling, but here's the thing, as I, I can tell you, the overwhelming majority of the people in the wrestling business that, that I've known and that I've encountered in my 37 years in this business have been really, really good people. So we felt like there was not any really movie that really shows that. So we wanted to show that, Hey, there's a lot of really good people in our business. And because of that, we show these strong relationships, how much these guys care about each other, how much they look out for each other, how much they lean on each other. And so, you know, when we were putting together the theme of the movie, you know, Luther and I came and I give Luther credit for this. He came up. He said, I think we can sum it up in three words. The theme of this movie is it's about camaraderie, loyalty and friendship. And, you know, if you if you go into a movie knowing that those are the things you're going to see that move, the story is about that then we just present it in a way where we show a whole lot of pro wrestling, you know, and a whole lot of, you know, uh, battling of the aliens. But, it, it, but the underlying story is a story about these guys who are good guys who care about each other and who are just generally good people. And when they're put in a position to do something that to help others that they don't even know, you know, they just they make a decision based on who they are as people. And, and that plays out for the audience to get to see. And, and we're really proud with the, the story we were able to come up with and the characters that we were able to create to, to, to tell that story with. Uh, one thing I've learned over the years, just being out on the outside looking in, is the brotherhood. Oh, like yeah. you said, all of those things come into play and they're real quick to do, you know, hey, we want to do fundraising, charity work, or that's, if you yeah. if you pay attention enough about wrestling, you know that's like you said. Uh, most wrestlers, it's not even like a lot. It's most of them are that way. Yeah, yeah. There's listen. I and when somebody says, "Oh, there's some bad eggs," and there's bad eggs in any any Everything. any bro. So don't don't go there. But like I said, yeah. I, I think like you said, I think you're pe you're appealing to a whole different set of <sighs> like for me. Like clearly, you're th you're when I saw this, those were, when you said Hooper, you I'm like, of course, yeah. that's like exactly what I was thinking of when I you know that type of stuff with the bar fights and things like that. So you're appealing to somebody my age, but it's yeah. gonna be it's gonna be you know even like just action movie, Magnificent Seven, Dirty Dozen, you know. So it's all the above. I think look, it's gonna be. I think it's going to be spectacular. Just for, even from watching the trailer, I'm excited about it. So, again, check out the trailer, theunbreakablebunch.com. I'll, again, share in the show notes everything. Uh -huh. Anything social will all be there, so make sure you check it out. Um, yeah. And, again, anything else, Ray, before we get out of here? I just want to, you know, oh, like, yeah, anything else yeah. you want to throw in? Yeah, yeah, I mean. Yeah, a few, a few more things is that, you know, just um, the, the because these are things that I were coming to my, you know, I was thinking about as you were saying that was, you know, like, as far as you know, the film itself, like we really wanted to play on a lot of nostalgia, you know, pro wrestling nostalgia and movie nostalgia. Uh, and so, like, there's there are some great, you know, Easter eggs in the movie for wrestling fans. Uh, and I will say this, especially if you're a championship wrestler, championship wrestler from Florida fan, a CWF fan, because we filmed in Florida, and, and Luther and I were both. You know, I grew up watching that, and, and Luther became a fan of it. You know, there's some really, really good tips of the hat to to to. Uh, CWF, you know, in the movie that I think people will really appreciate. Um, there's some other nostalgic things in there that uh, uh, once the movie's out, I'll talk more about them because I don't want to spoil them ahead of time. But uh, but um, but also, you know, is that when you see the trailer in there, like this is how much we really paid attention to nostalgia. Is, you know, the guy narrating the trailer. Uh, when you and I were coming up, there was, you know, the guy, Don LaFontaine, who did all yeah. that, was the movie voice. You know, he was the guy that, in the world, blah, blah, blah. So we wanted to find somebody who could, who, and obviously, you know, Mr. You know, LaFontaine's passed away, but there was, we found someone when we were working with our post-production studio, um, and I got to give a shout out to Sky Storm Productions uh, here in, in, in uh, Longwood, Florida, Lake Mary, Florida, up in Orlando north of Orlando, they have just been amazing with us and, and uh, we can't say enough good things about them, but, but they found, you know, someone who basically does that a very good rendition of that voice. And that's, and we wanted that on purpose in the trailer to show some of that nostalgia. We wanted to, as you were saying before we recorded, you know, wrestling just recently, you took you back to when you were, you know, a 10 year old, uh, you know, kid sitting with your, with your grandfather. And uh, uh, you know, those are your great grandfather. I mean, that's what we want to do in this movie is we really want to, use nostalgia you know to, to really uh use that to entertain as well and and i will say this is that 
we made this movie for professional, uh, say for pro, pro wrestling fans, but anybody who loves pro wrestling, <clears throat> for all the, you know, the pro wrestlers who, you know, let's face it, you know, I was a, I was a, you know, a, I always say, you know, QT Marshall and I always laugh, but we always say that, that when, you know, a lot of the kids that, that, that we train now that you run into wrestling are dreamers. Well, we were too, you know, so we proudly conclude ourselves as dreamers, you know, but, but, you know, it's it, it, the, the, the film itself is it, we made it for those dreamers, those people who love wrestling, who dream of, you know, that, that, that who let themselves step into that world, uh, that great fantasy world of pro wrestling and, and escape for a while. And, and, you know, those, those people deserve to have a movie that makes them feel good about being that person and feeling that when they watch wrestling or they're a part of wrestling. And, and that's, we knew there wasn't a movie really out there like this. And we knew that even if say the studios got a hold of a script like this to, to maybe do it, we didn't feel like they would do it as good as we could do it. You know, but they wouldn't get it exactly right. Like we felt like, or we knew we wanted to. So, uh, so we'll say this, as far as the movie itself, uh, it, there's a lot of pro wrestling in the movie. Uh, I, we didn't disappoint there, and, and and Nick can attest to him and Byron were there when we shot some of the wrestling and uh, and and the scene that they actually are in. Because I, you know, I kind of had a little bit of a uh, you know control over the final edit. I made sure that those guys got some good screen time in there. So, <laughs> so, and, uh, but um, but you know we uh, you know we, we wanted to make sure there's a, there's a lot of pro wrestling. A lot of the wrestling is is kind of it, it's 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 uh, told in, in montages, so it moves along really fast. There is one match in the in the movie that's a very pivotal part of the story that I think people are really going to enjoy watching. But uh, but you know and and then you know there's um, like I said a lot of the action. There's a lot of the classic fights, and it's funny because this is one thing that I see a lot of. Uh, and before I forget, please 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 guys, if you can, please share the. Um, uh, our YouTube, the, the trailer of our YouTube channel, please share that and like that as much as you possibly can. And please encourage other people to, because, because we're, we're just, we're the little independent film that could. And the more people that, that like our, our, um, our, our video, our, tra our trailer and like our YouTube channel, stuff like that, it just helps us, you know, when, uh, as far as when we present this to, uh, to other theaters, to try to, to get runs in other theaters, we can show we have a loyal following that, that will show up and support it. It only helps us. And, and, and in the end, we, we're doing all this for, for you guys, because we love wrestling like you guys love wrestling. And, but, um, but the, there's, you know, as far as the effects in the movie, I always like to throw this in there too, is uh, we actually, a lot of the, you know, the, when we battle the aliens that that kind of, last part of the movie takes place at night and so there's a lot of gunfire looks better at night let's face it <laughs> oh, yeah. so, and so we actually use practical effects as much as we could so there's a lot of a uh, lot of blanks you know with guns and stuff that just really look really cool we couldn't use that we had to use cgi on some of the gunfire some of the times uh most of the explosions in the movie are, are actual real explosions uh you know instead of cgi so we you know we were able to really give some real very realistic effects in the movie and um you know, the fight scenes, the fight scenes are, as I mentioned earlier, because of the type of characters, you know, the type of guys these characters are, you know, they are more big, burly type fighters. So I always say, like I said, we're, our fight scenes look a little bit more like John Wayne and John Wick, you know? <laughs> but, uh, but we still move good. I will say that we still move good. You know, I mean, Ernest can still he can kick some, anybody's head off and he does in this movie and, you know, Tonga can still move great and I can still move pretty darn good myself. So, uh, but, um, but, but the thing is, is that we wanted to, um, you know, make sure the action looked, looked authentic, but still looked fun, you know, and, and I think we provided that. I, I think you guys will hopefully let us know that. But um, but yeah, it's we just one of those elements of and, and also and it's something that, that Nick and I talked about before we, we started recording is I want everybody to know, too, that we were really big on making a movie that we feel like the general audience can sit down and watch. If you can if you sit down and watch pro wrestling, we feel like you can sit down and watch this movie. And uh, it, it did get an R rating. And that's simply because of the gunfire and explosions, and stuff like that. But here's what I will tell you. Um, it's probably the mildest R-rated film you'll ever see because there's literally no profanity in the movie. There's no gross humor in the movie. When I say that, I mean, there's no nobody projectile vomiting on anybody. <laughs> I mean, I know that's in a lot of movies and that's good, but we did, it didn't didn't have a place in our movie because it just wasn't written in the script. So we, we don't have any of that. But uh, and, um, you know, there's there's no there's certainly no over the top sexuality. There is a really good makings of a love story in the movie, though, which I don't think people are going to expect to see. And um, and yeah, so there's a lot of really great elements to we feel like the general audience. Uh, if you watch the trailer and and you you felt like the trailer is something you want to see, I promise you there is nothing more, you know, 
explosive or anything other what you see in the trailer is by far the most you know action you'll see as far as anything there's nothing any uh more um damaging than that as far as you know we, there's no heads being blown off and stuff like that in the movie, you know? i always say i will say this nick because it's my last thing because I, I i have so many points i want to make sure i hit is if you're a fans of like the a team tv series back in the 80s you know i always say okay. you know the a team they had what they call a team style action you know yep. where you know, you know there was no one ever really got you know seriously wounded or nobody ever really got killed on it, it was a, there was a lot of gunfire explosions but it, you know no one seemed to really ever really really get hurt too bad and that's kind of what we decided to try to that was our goal with the action um was uh you know to bring it back around to hal needham who was the guy who who shot uh smoking the direct to smoking the bandit with burt reynolds you know i remember him saying you know action you can have great action without it being violent and we yeah. felt like we really did provide a lot of action that's not necessarily you know violent mean you know uh type of violence and uh so um so yeah if, if i want like a, that's a good litmus say that if you if you enjoy the trailer and it made you want to feel like you want to watch this movie i promise you there's nothing more over the top in the movie that that you won't see in the trailer so Correct. that's a good litmus test <laughs> and, I, and like i said I, th- I think you know today with gunfire and things like that in the movie it was that's probably what happened right it, it, but oh, yeah, look, I, yeah. yeah it's you know but other than that we talked about it a little bit and I'll say the line. It was more or less like, look, be your child's parent. Yeah. If, yeah. if, if you're, if you, if you let your kid watch action movies, it's, it's fine. But you know, yeah. but that's your, it's your, it's your place to make that call. That's, you know. And, and I will tell you, if you look at the tag on our film, even at the beginning of the trailer, you'll see it has the R rating tag and you'll see, it says the only thing it says down there is some violence. You, right. It doesn't, you don't see language. You don't see nudity. You don't see any of that stuff because it's not in our movie, you know? And, uh, and, and so that it's not just my opinion. It's not just me saying that you can see on the tag of the, from in the trailer that we, you know, from the motion picture association who, who graded our movie, you know, that's, that's their assessment. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm telling you the stone cold truth. I promise. Yeah. <laughs> so, it. The Unbreakable Bunch movie dot com. You know, check it out. Uh, like I said, go into the show notes. We'll have all the links to everything, everything available in there. Keep following, like, especially on the Facebook. I know you guys do a great job. You're putting yeah. stuff out constantly. The trailer. That's where I first saw it. Believe it or not, was on there. Yeah. Took it to the YouTube channel. Uh, and look, anybody who's watching, make sure, like you said, go to the YouTube channel, like it, subscribe to the page. By the way, Please, turn yes. the notification. Turn the notifications on. Why do you do that? Because then, anytime they add anything, you'll just keep getting it. And please we'll like be the adding trailer. Tons of stuff. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and please like. That's I get it. Because when you're, yeah. that gives them ammo to take that out and try to get into it. Because a lot of people are like, oh, I want it in a theater closer to me. Yeah. There's how you help that happen. And that's another thing too, Nick. That I, I, I wanted to make sure it's because I got so many notes, and, I, and we don't have time to cover everything. But that's another thing is that we are doing the you know, first exclusive run with the Imagine Entertainment Theaters uh, up in the Midwest. But also, you know, that's our goal is to roll it out there. Uh, hopefully, it does as well as we we expect it to. Then that gives us you know our our numbers to be able to come to you know, especially like say the Southeast, you know, like to to, to Georgia and Florida, and you know, and then you know out in Texas and wherever else to actually show the movie there. So, uh, so that's, that's basically our game plan is, uh, kind of do this, this, uh, a uh, little bit of a, a limited release in the beginning, hopefully it gets the traction we think it will get. And if it does, then your numbers by you supporting the, the, the trailer and our YouTube channel, our social media, that gives us the, uh, the ammunition to go to other theaters and say, here, we have a following and we, we'd like to, you know, do a contract to, to, to have the movie show here in your theater. And, uh, and we feel like we're going to be able to do that a lot. So please help us out, guys. I promise we're doing all this for anybody that loves wrestling. We worked over oh, this movie took almost five years to get to the point where we can put it out. And it's, uh, it's all because we made it for everybody that loves wrestling. Like, like me and Nick. Oh, so. yeah. <laughs> listen, it's got Western, it's got action. It's got nostalgia. If you're a wrestler, it's got wrestling, especially with the names you rattled off. Like, look, we're fans of all of those guys support, you know, put, I always tell people sometimes it's best. Put your money where your mouth is and go out and support these guys. I mean, a hundred percent. So, and you know, I I say, like what I say in professional wrestling, I tell anyone who I've trained in pro wrestling uh, is the, the, the greatest thing that the the wrestling fan ever gives us as, as, as professional wrestlers is there's two gifts that they give us that are very invaluable gifts. 
their time and, and their money. You know, they give it, they, they buy a ticket and they come give their time and their attention to watch and, and support us. So that's really what we hope people will do with the movie is give us your, 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 your time, you know, buy, purchase the tickets to support the film wherever we're at and, you know, show us that, that, uh, you know, that there is an audience that we know is out there. So that, listen, if, if we have an amazing uh, investor for our film who is just a, a amazing, amazing person and professional and, uh, and he's already made it very clear, you know, that he wants to do more. So if, uh, if this thing does as good as we hope it will, there's certainly going to be more to come. I promise you that. And we want to make more because we want to make stuff that people love. We want to make movies that's a fun ride for, for wrestling fans. And um, so hopefully you guys will help and support us and give us that opportunity so we can bring more, more good stuff to you. Uh, that's all we can hope for, right? Like, yeah, put your absolutely. money where your mouth is. Everybody says this is what they want. Let's make it happen. Support the guys, the Unbreakable Bunch Movie dot com, and like I said, all forms of social media. Well, Ray, it is always my pleasure, man. Anytime oh, I get to hang out with you and talk to you, uh, <laughs> hopefully it's the, you know, look, we're we're just far apart as far as from state to state, uh, but we need to get catch up sometime soon. Maybe at a convention absolutely. or something, we'll run across each other. Um, absolutely, but man. hey, always you, a pleasure. You know how much- and you know how much I appreciate you allowing me to come on and, and you know talk about the the movie because uh, you guys have such a great platform. You have such a great fan base for your show, and uh, and it just means the world to me that you because I know we put this together pretty quick, and it just means the world to me that you made time to to have me you know on and and to talk about the film. Well, you know me, man. You're always welcome. If you just wanted to talk wrestling, you could hit me up and say, "Hey, let's talk wrestling." So, but okay, look, I, I'm glad you you know had you know you wanted to come on talk to us about the movie. Like I said, we were around on that outside edges you know but what we saw we've been psyched for oh that's been a that's been a few years since that <laughs> since that happened so uh but yeah we're looking forward to it again the unbreakable bunch movie.com check out all the social media and uh right we got to catch up soon man absolutely nick well thank you again man I, I appreciate everything i really appreciate you guys supporting this and i'm so glad you guys were a part of it i'm glad you you guys will live forever in the unbreakable bunch movie you know <laughs> can't wait to see it well right we'll catch you down the road buddy Yes, sir.